Welcome to our Maundy Thursday service. Before we begin this service, I would ask that you uh, pause your video and make sure that you have elements for communion. We will be celebrating communion later in the service. You may get whatever you wish, whatever is available in your house. It may be bread and juice, it may be coffee and crackers, it may be other things. Preferably some kind of a grain and some drink. Uh, we would encourage you to do that. So we're gonna give you a chance to pause the video right now and then uh, we will begin the service. On this night of nights, when Jesus gathered with his disciples, we remember. Let us worship God together. Jesus said, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as Christ has loved us, let us love one another. Beloved people of God, this is the day when Christ, our Passover lamb, surrendered himself to those who would kill him, setting us free from sin and death forever. This is the day when Christ, our teacher and Lord, knelt down to wash the disciples' feet, showing us how to love and serve one another. This is the day when Christ, the bread of heaven, shared a holy meal with his followers, offering a feast of abundant life and grace for all. Let us sing together, Jesu, Jesu, fill us with your love. Jesu, Jesu, fill us with your love, show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. Kneels at the feet of his friends, silently washes their feet. Master who acts as a slave to them. Jesu, Jesu, fill us with your love, show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. Neighbors are rich and poor, varied in color and race. Neighbors are near and far away. Jesu, Jesu, fill us with your love, Show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. These are the ones we should serve. These are the ones we should love. All our neighbors to us and you. Jesu, Jesu. Fill us with your love, show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. Loving puts us on our knees, serving as though we are slaves. This is the way we should live with you. Jesu, Jesu. Fill us with your love, show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. Kneel at the feet of our friends, silently washing their feet. This is the way we should live with you. Jesu, Jesu, Fill us with your love, show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you.
The proof of God's amazing love is this. While we were sinners, Christ died for us. Because we have faith in him, we dare to approach God with confidence. In faith and penitence, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Eternal God, whose covenant with us is never broken, we confess that we fail to fulfill your will. Though you have bound yourself to us, we will not bind ourselves to you. In Jesus Christ, you serve us freely, but we refuse your love and withhold ourselves from others. We do not love you fully or love one another as you command. In your mercy, forgive and cleanse us. Lead us once again to your table and unite us to Christ, who is the bread of life and the vine from which we grow in grace. Amen. Lamb of God, who takes our guilt away, Lamb of God, who takes our guilt away, Lamb of God, who takes our guilt away, redeeming, releasing, relieving grace. Who's in a position to condemn us? Only Christ. And Christ lived for us. Christ died for us. Christ was raised for us. Christ reigns in victory for us, and Jesus Christ prays for us. Know that Jesus, in Jesus Christ, you are forgiven, and be at peace. Amen. If there are those in the room with you, offer Christ peace to them at this time. Let us now prepare our hearts to hear God's word by reciting together the prayer for illumination. Eternal God, by your word and spirit, you have given us a new commandment to love and serve one another in Jesus' name. Let the good news of your liberating love be sealed in our hearts and shown in our lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, Amen. Our first scripture passage comes from Psalm 116. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications, because he inclined his ear to me. Therefore, I will call on him as long as I live. The snares of death encompassed me. The pangs of Sheol laid hold on me. I suffered distress and anguish. Then I called on the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray, save my life. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is merciful. The Lord protects the simple. When I was brought low, he saved me. Return, O my soul, to your rest, for the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. For you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. I walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I kept my faith, even when I said, I am greatly afflicted. I said in my consternation, everyone is a liar. What shall I return to the Lord for all his bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord 
is the death of his faithful ones. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your serving girl. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer to you a thanksgiving sacrifice and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. And then from Luke 23, verse 46, we read these words. Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. The verse I just read is the last in the series on Jesus' seven last words from the cross. We started by hearing, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And then we heard, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. We heard, here is your mother. Here is your son. Then we heard Jesus cry out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And he said, I am thirsty. And then he said, It is finished. And Jesus' final words, before he breathed his last. Our Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. As Jesus sat with his disciples on the night of what would become his last supper with them, he shared much about what was to come. And they didn't fully understand what he spoke about. As a matter of fact, they probably hardly understood anything of what he was sharing with them. He shared with them that he would suffer and die, and they argued that it couldn't possibly be so. He modeled servant leadership by washing their feet, and they protested. As he shared the Passover meal with them, he spoke about his body being broken and his blood being poured out, and they didn't understand. He said they would betray and abandon him, and they denied that it could possibly be true. He spoke of loving one another. He prayed that God's love would abide in them, and their love would abide in God. And they wondered who among them was the greatest. And as we know, Jesus' words came true. Some in the hours immediately following that meal, and some after the resurrection. But here we have Jesus on the cross. And even on the cross, Jesus spoke words of care for the people of the world. He offered forgiveness because so often our minds are so clouded by sin that we don't truly know what we're doing. We justify our actions Don't admit what's wrong, and Jesus forgives us. He promised us a life in eternal paradise with him, even though we don't always measure up. He encouraged us to love each other like family and to truly become community together. 
And after those words about us, he turned to words that were more about his own personal issues. He grieved over the broken relationship he had with God because of our sin, the break that our sin created. He took the cup of salvation that he spoke about at the Last Supper and that he asked to be taken from him in the Garden of Gethsemane. And he drank of its bitter contents. At that point, he knew that his work on earth was completed and declared it was finished. Finally, his relationship with God was restored, and Jesus commended his spirit into God's hands. Hands that received him openly and with love. In this act, Jesus commends us all into God's loving hands. Hands that still bear the scars of woundedness. Hands that reach out to us when we are wandering away. Hands that continue to hold us even through these scary and lonely days. We are being held in the hands of God, the hands of Jesus. Allow God's hands to wrap around you Allow God to hold you in the palm of his hand in love and security, knowing that they will never, never, never let you go. Amen. Let us affirm what we believe by reciting together from the Confession of 1967. Jesus of Nazareth, true humanity, was realized once for all. Jesus, a Palestinian Jew, lived among his own people and shared their needs, temptations, joys, and sorrows. He expressed the love of God in word and deed and became a brother to all kinds of sinful people. But his complete obedience led him into conflict with his people. His life and teaching judged their goodness, religious aspirations, and national hopes. Many rejected him and demanded his death. In giving himself freely for them, he took upon himself the judgment under which all humanity stands convicted. God raised him from the dead, vindicating him as Messiah and Lord. The victim of sin became victor and won the victory over sin and death for all humankind. The risen Christ is the savior for all people. Those joined to him by faith are set right with God and commissioned to serve as his reconciling community. Christ is the head of this community, the church, which began with the apostles and continues through all generations. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to do far more abundantly than all we ask or think, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Let us sing together the first two verses of An Upper Room Did Our Lord Prepare. An upper room did our Lord prepare for those he loved until the end and his disciples still gather there to celebrate their risen friend a lasting gift jesus 
just gave his own to share his bread, his loving cup. Whatever burdens may bow us down, he by his cross shall lift us up. You are invited to the Lord's table. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what you have done. It doesn't matter what church you go to. It only matters that you believe and trust in Jesus Christ. Let us pray together. Liberating and redeeming God, we give thanks that you hear the cries of your people Therefore, in our time of trial, we call upon your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As you delivered our ancestors from slavery and led them to a land of promise and plenty, liberate all who are captive or oppressed and bring them to a place of abundant life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As you saved your people from death on the night of Passover, redeem us from sin and death through Jesus Christ the Lamb. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, stooped down to wash his disciples' feet, teach us to love and serve our neighbors with Christ-like compassion and humility. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As Christ the Lord has handed on to us a feast of grace in his body and blood, help us to share with all who hunger the gifts we have received from you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our liberator and redeemer, we give thanks that you have heard our cry. Continue to lead us from death to life eternal and let our lives be a sign of your saving love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, on the night that he was betrayed, Jesus took bread. And he blessed it and he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which has been broken for you. Eat this in remembrance of me. And after they had eaten, Jesus took the cup. And he said, This cup is the new covenant of salvation poured out in my blood for the sins of many. Drink this in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim Christ's death, yes, but we also proclaim his resurrection and his ascension and our entry into life, eternal life, with him. And we proclaim this until he comes back again. Amen and amen. You may now partake of the elements. You may choose to either take a piece and dip it into your cup or else to take a piece of bread and eat it, and then take from your cup and drink it. Let us commune together at this time.
And now let us pray. God of grace, we give you thanks for the feast of redemption we have shared in the body and blood of our Savior. As you have nourished us with love, let our lives proclaim your great love for the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And after supper he washed their feet for service to his sacrament. In Christ thy joy shall be made complete, sent out to serve as he was sent. No end there is, we depart in peace. He loves beyond our uttermost. In every room in our Father's house, Christ will be there.